But uh, before that, I think the first one is to thank the people of Nakuru for a very peaceful election and uh, uh, also turning up on 9th to exercise their voting rights. And uh, uh, allow me therefore to go to the, the issues. We have noted several aspects within the results that have been uh, returned that we think constitute grave violation of the expected uh, voting uh, results in any place. And I think the first one we want to note is that we have seen uh, an unnatural pattern of how people voted. We have cases where you have a voting center with three or four streams. And the three streams each vote exactly the same number. So 90, 90, 90, or 150, 150, 150. And given that some of these places were divided alphabetically, it is not possible that an exact same number of people would have agreed and distributed themselves equally uh, into the different you know, like streams. Uh, therefore, that points to a, a very unnatural voting pattern that invites for further scrutiny. Secondly, uh, we have also noted inconsistencies in the different uh, uh, county seats uh, between women rep, uh, governor, uh, senator, and also the president. Uh, which simply means that there are people, mathematically speaking, who went, voted for the president, but never voted for anyone else. Others voted for president and governor and voted not for the others. And I think the worst affected is the women rep. So the question would be, uh, what happened to that voter after voting for the president? No, how, how, how do they disappear in the queue before they vote for the other two or three? And uh, I think that is a very serious issue that requires uh, serious forensic before we can be able to unveil. But uh, from the onset, it uh, clearly points to some fraud along that area. We, thirdly, we also have had uh, massive or rampant uh, instances where our agents were denied access to the polling stations and uh, they were told their, their, their letters were not stamped and it took so much back and forth until most of them were allowed on or after 10 a.m. in the morning and uh, what happened before they were allowed in we can only imagine then uh, <clears throat> number four there is the issue of the voter turnout there is a general understanding and knowledge that the voter turnout was generally low in fact, in many places, there was hardly any queue. And by the close of the day, we were around 50, 55 on voter turnout. But as it were, finally, when the results are tallied, it is coming to 68. So where did the other people come? Uh, where did they come from? Given that uh, the general understanding across all our polling stations that there was very low voter uh, turnout. So where did the 68, 70% come from when there was hardly any queue? And for those who are here in 2017 compared to now when you were doing about 80, queues were as long as maybe 100, 200 meters in some centers. But to, uh, in the just concluded 9th uh, August, there were simply no queues. But the voter turnout in the same places we are now being told is to the tune of 70, 68 percent. Again, very suspicious. Then um, we have instances of voter bribery and widespread violence, especially in Akuru East, among others. And this, in a way, uh, affected voters coming to exercise their voting rights. In conclusion, we see Nakuru as one of those areas that were targeted by a very deliberate and well-orchestrated international electoral fraud uh, that did not just start uh, at the voting. It was something that was well thought. There were young people here who came a long time way before the election uh, with laptops and all the, the other gadgets and had access to the system. And the question is, how can the IEBC, charged with the responsibility of ensuring the integrity of an election, allow all this to happen? And uh, therefore, as a team, we are currently uh, uh, speaking with our 
legal and other technical teams including ICT with a view to taking the necessary actions. Uh, as it were, Wanjiko votes and our responsibility is only to, to count what she has voted. We have no business manipulating what she has voted. And I think this will be the area of concern as we go to the coming days. And uh, therefore our conclusion is that the integrity of the process cannot uh, be guaranteed and therefore the outcomes likewise do not reflect what Wanjiko did. And uh, this uh, vote manipulation is a very serious uh, challenge to our voting process and I think also a serious threat to even to our national security. If you allow this kind of fraudsters into the nation then we don't know where we are going next. Allow me to end there and once again to thank you. We have said we are consulting with our legal and other experts, so I think uh, the rest will be determined from there. Yeah. Is that okay? But I think what you're saying in short is that the results do not reflect how people voted. After voting, there was manipulation, both electronic and otherwise, other forms of manipulation. And uh, this is the subject of part of what we will be investigating now and in the coming days. Thank you.